The story of this Norwich enterprise began a few miles away in the rural piece of Stoke Holy Cross a century and a quarter ago, in a mill which still survives as a restaurant. Jeremiah Coleman, a Norwich miller, had moved there in 1814, buying the existing flour and mustard business of Edward Ames. He might have just remained a prosperous local businessman employing a handful of workers, but in February 1823 came the move which was to prove the catalyst which launched the firm into worldwide prominence. He went into partnership with his nephew James to form the business of J and J Coleman. Old Jeremiah was a man of immense character. Politically an old-time Whig and free trader, he was a jovial and generous non-conformist in every sense of the word. But remaining childless, he was unable to directly establish the Coleman dynasty, which was to dominate the life of Norwich for a century. This was left to his new partner and nephew, James, a hard-working man of clear judgment, who took as his motto, be sure you're right, then go ahead. He was one of 15 children. Indeed, he and his 11 brothers formed their own family cricket team and their score sheets, still in existence, show them to have had a formidable record. In the early 1850s, the city was the decaying relic of the previous century, impoverished by the disappearance of the woolen and weaving trades. New life came with new industry, and at its head, a rare type of Victorian businessman, a non-conformist philanthropist, ready to give as well as to take. It was he who coined the phrase we never say can't at Carrow. At the end of the century, the firm looked after its workers and their families quite literally from the cradle to the grave. One of the great features was the provision of a coffin for all the employees. And this uh, was supplied to the staff as well as to the work people. Of course, this entailed having two levels of activity. Uh, for the work people, they used what was known as hedgerow oak and there would be two men and a boy set on the job to prepare it. Uh, for the more important members of the firm, those on the staff, uh, a similar team would be used, although they would bring in others if this was necessary. Uh, but two coffins would in fact be made. The first one would be a shell in which the body of the deceased would be placed almost directly after death. And then the team would go away to make the real coffin which was made of what was known as staff oak, and it was a lovely bit of wood, I'm told. And then they would come along when this was finished and transfer the shell inside the, the, the coffin proper, which, of course, also had uh, panels and, and a, a raised lid and a, a brass plate, which uh, gave all the details. And this was uh, very well thought of by all members of the staff. There was plenty of sport, too, the football team once playing on the field, which is now the home of the Canaries. Even in the early days, Colmans were prepared to diversify their products. Blue men emerged nightly from a factory making laundry blue. And it was found that starch making could have an interesting effect on the girls engaged in its manufacture. After working in the starch house for some months, thin, anemic girls became buxom and attractive. It was discovered that the dust from the nutritious husk of the rice used for the starch bathed the girls in vitamins throughout the working day. Another almost forgotten Coleman enterprise became a casualty of the Second World War. Norwich had cashed in on the shortage of German canaries and sold a complete package deal to the Americans, canary, cage and seed. In charge of the birds was a man known as Canary King, and he developed his own method of sexing the birds. I found out I could sex the birds by just looking at the eyes and noticing the movement of the eye is slow for the female and a cock bird is a quick action one. Sadly, the canary enterprise dwindled as German U-boats became more active. Nothing remains of the Caro canaries. Old Jeremiah Coleman believed fervently in the faith the size of a mustard seed which could move mountains and he proved that mustard seed can build empires.